Hello and welcome to beautiful Malibu, California and to Inside EVs, where today we have this, the crazy cool Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. This isn't just any Cross Turismo, this is a production intent prototype, still got some camouflage bits on it, and we're running on German tags. This is pretty neat. Let's go do a full walk around and take it for a drive. I'm gonna take you on a tour of the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo and talk about some of the differences between this and the regular Taycan. Now, if you're not aware, I just spent like 8,000 miles in almost a little week, week and a day in a Taycan, so I'm pretty familiar right off the bat. So I'm gonna talk about the differences as you and I experience the car for the first time. Actually, let's close the hood because we have some styling elements we need to talk about. This headlight design is pretty much the same. We have the same air vents into the side here. However, the car just sits over overall a little bit higher. Now this particular one has some fake stickered fog lights. That's not real. <laughs> it's literally just a peel peel sticker. So I don't know if that's production intent or not. My guess is it's there just to throw people off. Who knows? It's got the really cool cleared side, mic side micro lights that we don't get here in the US because of our FMVSS Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards require a amber, amber side marker light here on the side. This particular one is on the 20 inch wheels with carbon ceramic discs. They've also specced the discs with the black brake calipers so they don't have the traditional gold carbon ceramics that Porsches are known for. So come around the front with me. Of course, we're watching the Deutschland license plate here. The German plate, gotta love it, so cool. Let's take a look under the front trunk. You can see they've peeled the Porsche sticker, or I should say just wrapped over them in black. This is just a black wrap. Why they did that, I'm not sure. What other car would this be? Front trunk looks identical. You have the two side storage compartments, same as the normal Taycan here and here. Same with your same equipment. This one has the warning triangles that I don't think the US spec cars have. And then of course you have your brake fluid top up and your washer fluid top up. Pretty much the only maintenance items on this whole car. This car I don't actually think is painted or if it is, it's in like this Nardo light gray color. Looks really cool, but I gotta say, it looks even cooler wrapped in black with all these camo bits on it. Come around the uh, right side with me. We have the same bits, and then we notice some extra trim pieces here. Now we're again, not sure if this will be standard or optional, but we have some flares here on the side that increases down here as well with some arrow bits. Now you'll notice this car is covered in dirt. They've been ripping this around doing testing here in the US with this car. We're very lucky that we get to drive it, but you can see you get some dirt that's caught up in these arrow components all around. I think it looks really cool. Is that gonna be hard to clean? I'm not totally sure. This one has the dual charge port side. So you can see on this side, we just have our J1772 port. On the other side, we have the CCS connector, which is J1772 and the two DC pins. Let's go around this side of the car and this is where some of the differences happen. You have a full glass roof. It's absolutely gorgeous. You would actually not even know that that's a glass roof from the outside. We have the roof rails, which look great. Gotta get roof rails on your Taycan Cross Turismo. Not sure if they're standard or optional, but 100% go with them and throw a roof box on there. So let's go around the back. Of course, we have some more aero components down here on the side just before we go. You can see dirt caked all up in there, which is kind of cool. And this is where most of the change happens. On the normal Taycan, you, you know it slopes down and comes to a sedan shape, and then you just get a normal trunk. I still maintain the fact that it should be a hatchback, but it's not. Here in this variant, in the Cross Turismo, it is a hatchback. So there's a little button here on the trunk that I can push. And then we get a full hatch opening as it should be on a wagon, which is great. Again, you can see this light silver sort of primer colored uh, car underneath the black wrap. And then we get this trunk design. Now we're not totally sure if some of these panels are production ready. We might actually get even more room than we're seeing here. But overall, I'd say you can put a dog back there, remove this uh, little parcel shelf, throw the seats down and you'd have plenty of room for all of your things. Uh, way more than the regular Taycan, that is for sure. Under floor storage as well, come on and take a look. This is the big story here. 
Well, I said not the underfloor story, storage is the big story, but the trunk space itself is the big story. So all of this is the same as the normal Tycon, the 12 volts on the same port, the straps are on the same sides, uh, same places, but you do get the seats that fold down and this compartment that comes out, which is great. And who just, you know, hatchbacks are better. That's the, the, the only way. You're like, who doesn't love a fast wagon? Pretty aggressive rear diffuser going on back here. Again, Euro spec car with the space for the wide license plate. We're running on Florida tags on the back. Now I'm gonna climb into the back seat for the first time and see how it feels compared to the normal Taycan. Again, in the regular Taycan, knee room is okay. I do have to sort of man spread around the passenger seat. Again, after doing thousands of miles in that car, we're pretty comfortable with the back seat dimensions. And then of course you have that roof line that slopes down. So you kind of have to just crouch a little bit so you don't hit your head. I don't know if that'll be the same here, but let's find out. Oh, wow. Instantly better. <laughs> so the back seats are uh, just as supportive and comfortable. They have that sculpting to hold you in. I can stretch up as far as I want and I don't even hit my head. Come on in here. Take a look at this. I have, oh man, a, more than one full fist, not quite two, but a fist and a half of headroom up here. Wow, this is significantly better. And we still have the same, you know, seat design with the center armrest. I mean, everything's pretty much the same. You get the screen back here with your air vents and your heated seat controls. Wow, what a difference. This is the big story. If you have to have anyone sit in the back, this is like a whole nother kind of car. It's totally usable as a five seater now, uh, instead of the previous one, which was kind of like a two, maybe plus two shorter people. And then uh, if you wanna put a third person in the back, like good luck, uh, but this is way better. The glass roof extends way farther back uh, behind my head than the normal Tycon. So the, the headrest room and everything, you can reach back as far as you want, it doesn't hit. So you can see here just how far back the glass roof goes. In the normal, I should say, sedan Tycon, is that is it a sedan? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you get this bar that comes across the back that's just behind your head, and you end up hitting your head and squeezing it between the headrest and the, the bar where the glass roof ends. Here, not the case. The glass roof goes all the way back. It's actually one of the farthest rearward extending glass roofs I've seen in any car and you still have access to the back seat and trunk. I should say just the trunk area. So with the parcel shelf removed, you could have a dog back there easily with the back seats up. That's a big story. So they can stick their head right here and get some of the air vent from the back seat. Or if you really wanna give them full room, lower the back seats, they can have the whole rear of the car. And that's the big thing. I know I keep talking about dogs uh, and cars, but this is a really important thing. If you need one car that can do everything, it has to haul around all of your stuff it needs to handle well, needs to perform well, and you need to bring your friends and family, dogs or family, along with you in the car. And this is the car for it. You can easily fit everyone and everything in here. This is a huge departure from the previous Taycan, where the cabin felt small and cramped. This feels large and airy. Seriously, my first impressions right here in this video, but I, I'm not overhyping it. This is a big change. All right, we're taking the Cross Turismo for a first drive right now roll up all the windows, the seat belt tightens you when you get inside. Now, this isn't gonna be a full in-depth review of the Cross Turismo. We're gonna spend some quality time with it pretty soon. But what I at least wanna see in this video is how similar is it to the normal sedan Taycan. And um, like I had mentioned, I would spent quite a bit of time with Taycan over the last week and a half or so. And this feels almost the same. Now, instantly off the bat going around some things, Options make a big difference in Porsche as to how the car drives. So this particular one has PDCC, Porsche Dynamic Traction Control, sorry, that's <laughs> Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control. Then it also has rear steer. So the rear wheels at low speed will spin at opposite directions of the front wheel to shorten the wheelbase to pivot the car around a corner. And then at higher speeds, they actually turn in the same direction as the wheel to lengthen the chassis to make it smoother on high speed bends. It's a really cool system and uh, you do feel the difference it's not you know crazy noticeable probably to the average driver but to a keen driver on a tight road like this when you really start throwing it around it really shortens up the car especially in sport plus mode so uh cross turismo you know instances instantly off the bat there is no perceptible difference that i'm driving a wagon version or a hatchback version or whatever you would want to call it an estate version for our uk friends and um 
that's great. You know, the Taycan's an amazing driving car. No one disputes that. People dispute it for, and kind of give it unnecessary criticism for the price. Uh, certainly it is expensive, but what Porsche isn't. Uh, also, you can spec a base one. Like, they're not 200 grand. You can get one under $100,000 now, well under $100,000 with some new variants coming. And that's that's a great, you're buying a Porsche, electric Porsche, all this engineering technology that's gone into it. It's great. And then, you know, you can spec it to $230,000 if you want to for a regular Taycan sedan, Turbo S. Uh, but you don't need to. I think you, I think the sweet spot is the Turbo with some performance options for me. And, and I would probably skip the Turbo S. They're all fast. Um, now we get into, you know, the other reason that the Taycan gets a bad rap, which is range. In our uh, range testing here at Inside EVs, you know, we've noticed an EPA rated Taycan at 203 miles of range uh, actually did 277.9 miles in our own testing at 70 miles per hour highway. So just imagine how easy it would be to eke out 300 miles. Keep in mind that car was on the large 21 inch wheels, the worst wheels for that test. I do believe a Taycan on aero wheels will do 300 miles in our 70 mile per hour test. Maybe we should try that. Uh, so the range is just wrong by the EPA, totally inaccurate. You have to completely ignore it. Um, and we, you know, we set the cannonball record in a Taycan just a few weeks ago. And so the long distance ability is actually faster than a Tesla. We've proven it. Go across the country, New York to Los Angeles, the Taycan's faster than a Model 3 rear wheel drive modified, lowered with more efficiency in the middle of summer. We did the Taycan in the middle of winter. So we had like everything against us for the Taycan there. And it's not to say I don't like Tesla. Look, I drive a Tesla. I love them. I, they're amazing. They're great cars. And probably the Model 3 performance is the best value per dollar of on paper performance. Uh, what other car is going to go zero to 60 in three and a bit seconds and handle so well around the track? And they certainly do. But this is a whole nother league. This is the next step up. This is comfortable, quiet, everyday cruising, massaging seats if you spec it that way. Um, you know, just a very luxurious, premium bank vault type feeling. And then you get on a road like this and you just twist this little switch on the wheel up to Sport Plus and noises start happening and transmission starts going down a gear. Yes, it has a two-speed transmission. Uh, that is getting better with calibration, but I'm not a huge, huge fan of it. I just love the way this thing turns into a corner. It's pretty amazing. Uh, the two-speed stays out of the way with newer calibration for the most part. Um, you really only notice it shift under wide open acceleration on the one, two. You don't ever feel it downshift, so that's okay. And again, I think it's worth every penny. You know, we don't know pricing for the Cross Turismo, but it's it's gonna be expensive. It's a Porsche, and it should be. It's worth every penny. So anyway, uh, that's our first uh, initial impressions of the Cross Turismo from the driver's seat. It's just as quiet. It's just as comfortable, if not even a little bit more comfortable. There's a new gravel setting here. I'm gonna put it in gravel right now, and I don't actually know what gravel does, but I think it raises the suspension. Yep, suspension in high, drive mode gravel. So it should alter the suspension maybe for a little bit more lean and lift. Uh, yeah, it doesn't actually let you adjust the dampers in gravel mode. So yeah, it feels squishier and um, definitely pretty cool to say the least. So uh, let's run up this road in gravel really quick. <laughs> we just spun all four tires, which was great. Now we're gonna go back into Sport Plus. So gravel mode's like perfect. I'm gonna turn that silly electric sport sound off. Gravel mode is perfect if you're gonna go rallying. And this car on a rally circuit, it just would demolish everything. Instant electric torque, really cool. Um, you know, chassis control, that rear steering to really shorten that wheelbase, great for drifting. Everything you would want on dirt, this car has for you, and now it finally has a mode with some increased ride height. But look at the grip and the rotation in Sport Plus mode. You just get it in, and the back end just pivots and goes. It's the way it should be in a car. Um, really freaking amazing chassis control. Wow. <laughs> so it retains the Porsche great driving handling characteristics that you'd want from your electric sports car better than any electric car by far you can definitely tell it's heavy but it hides the weight and that rear steering on a road like this and you get power on oversteer out of corners Oof, what an amazing monster of a car and we just have a cyclist up here so uh 
run, lady, get out of the road. Um, yeah, so whew, amazing car, really amazing car. And uh, you don't lose anything over the normal Taycan. This is the one to buy. I know I sound so excited, and it's because I am. Uh, because look at this power, holy crap, does it freaking move. And you don't lose anything with the extra space. Now I can bring my golden retriever with me and she can clench onto the back as we go tear up some racetracks. <laughs> Which, yes, she has been on a couple hot laps. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching Inside EVs. I hope you've enjoyed this first peek into a pre-production prototype Porsche Cross Turismo Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo and we'll see you on the next one of course when we can spend more in-depth time with this car but for now I'm gonna go drive this thing on some amazing roads <laughs> this was one of the best handling cars I've ever driven it's it's almost cheating driving an electric car on a road like this you just get the instant power out of a corner and man the braking performance from those ceramics is immediate immediate <laughs>